Welcome, folks, to Maximum Off Grid. I am your hostess, Regina, and my website is MaximumOffGrid.com. And today we are talking about solar hot water heater systems. I'm about to blast you with so much information, it's going to blow your freaking mind. So you may want to save this to your favorite off grid projects playlist and refer to it over and over again. So before we get started, I just want to mention that this is a 3,000 word article on my website. The link is in the show notes and in that article that is not in this video are two DIY solar power water heater system builds for your off-grid lifestyle. So you definitely want to check that article out. All right, so we are just going to roll right into this presentation. So the concept of solar hot water, it's not very well known in America. I don't really understand why, because everyone is touting the whole green thing. And this is about as green as it freaking gets, but you just don't see them. Now this photo is from India. India has embraced the Dud Shemesh, AKA Sun Boiler. So they're on it. So beyond accounting for the dollars spent on heating water every year, when you live off grid, you quickly come to realize that electricity is a precious resource and heating and cooling systems take a ton of electricity. Coffee makers take three kilowatts of electricity to make one pot of coffee, okay? When you are off grid and you are on solar power, wind power, these are precious kilowatts. Every kilowatt is precious. How does a solar hot water heater system work? Now this is a pre-fabricated system. Uh, I'm more in favor of the DIY methods. We'll go over those later. Basically in its most simplistic form, water sits in a vessel or container and it gets heated up by the sun and that's it. That's literally how it works. Okay. These vessels are called solar collectors. The solar collectors can be simple and homemade or they can range to more complex versions like the one you see in front of your face. I highly recommend, unless you have one of these fancy systems that has this really cool uh, specialized solar water heater uh, tank, plumb in your solar co collector into your existing hot water. This ensures that you have hot water no matter what, day or night, sun, no sun, because that's the main thing. No sun equals no hot water. Morning, you're not going to have hot water until the sun is hitting that collector. So do yourself a favor, keep your electric or propane or gas uh, hot water heater, and you can plumb that directly into your cold water line. That's what you do. You plumb your solar collector into your cold water line. All right. So all solar hot water heaters rely on convection. What is convection, you ask? Convection happens when cold water sinks to the bottom and hot water rises to the top. Cold water is denser than hot water, so it sinks to the bottom while heated water rises to the top. And I just basically said the same thing two times in a row. So the, dish, the discharge port on your tank will be located at the top of the heater because your hot water is up there and your cold water intake is located at the bottom of your heater. And we've got Nerdy Pepe to approve. Now, there are three types of solar hot water collectors. The first type is the solar batch hot water collector. Now these bad boys, this is a really cool DIY build, by the way. Basically 55 gallon uh, barrel, metal barrel, sitting, no, that's not metal. That's a 55 gallon uh, plastic barrel, because metal is no good for drinking water. And they painted it black. So they sit in the sun and the water warms up in the sun and the water is routed into either a secondary holding tank. I highly doubt this system is routed straight into the hot water plumbing of the house. This is a great example of how routing your hot water collector works really well with your pre-existing uh, 
traditional hot water heater. So that's your first type. Okay, your second type is, these are called flat plate solar hot water collector. This just happens to be a coiled one. There's different types. You can find the hose that kind of squiggles. You can find these just flat mats that hold water, but it's essentially the same thing. It's just a flat uh, tubing, and it's typically, you find them on the tops of roofs. Uh, the problem with this type is it's prone to freezing, so keep that in mind if you live in a cold area. Uh, the third type is your thermal solar tube collector. Okay, so these are a little crazy. These are high tech, but they're very, very cool, and they don't have moving parts. They're, they're really not going to break down on you. So let's take a closer look at the thermal solar tube collector. Okay, so basically, uh, it is the most efficient hot water solar system and they're very expensive. Uh, the thermal tube collector connects to a copper header that heats up in the sun. The copper header connects to a heating fin that runs down the length of the glass tube. The fin heats the water very efficiently. Uh, the inner tube and fin, they fit into this glass tube, which I already explained. These collectors are quote unquote evacuated so these are evacuated thermal, thermal solar tube collectors because all of the air is removed from the glass tubing. And air is what whisks heat away from water, so removing the air eliminates conductive heat loss. This is what makes them so dang effective. This is a style of solar hot water heater that you can use in places that freeze. However, you still have to have some sort of antifreeze system. We will get into freezing situations uh, down the road. So now is the time that I'm going to ask for viewer support. It won't take long. Here we go. Oh, wait, there's a Pepe first. <laughs> All right. Are you loving this article, aka video? You can download this all this information as a PDF. Why would you want to download this as a PDF? Because you can print it out and read it anytime you want, by the pool, on a plane, whatever. You can access the article when you are offline, okay? You can add the text, if you print it out, to your shit hit the fan, your SHTF off-grid library. I'm a big proponent of printing out information because if we did lose power, if we did lose internet for a long period of time, you are going to lose access to all the information available online. And if you do not have a printout and you do not have the knowledge, you could totally screw yourself. I digress. And another reason mate, why you wanna download this as a PDF is because it helps keep maximum off grid running. So you can get the PDF for a buck 50. It's super cheap. It's less than a price of a soda pop. You'll be receiving invaluable knowledge for building your off-grid lifestyle, and you're helping me keep the website running. You're helping me create content. And uh, also, I am ad-free on the website, which is, you don't find that very often, so I rely on viewer support. This is a way to get your own value. Okay, great. We've got Dancing Pepe. Uh, also, the link is in the show notes if you want to grab the PDF for a buck fifty. Just click on that link, super fast, super easy. And I did start a Patreon. I have not really done anything with it, but if you wanna throw a little cash at me, I will appreciate it. And one more way to support me is by sending me cryptocurrency. That's gotta be my favorite. <laughs> okay, so I have my Ethereum address in the show notes. I accept any Ethereum token and also uh, not only do I accept the ERC-20 blockchain, I do accept BEP-20 blockchain. I actually prefer it. And that's all I'm going to say about that. Moving on. How to circulate hot water without a pump. Okay, so this is where the off-grid fun starts. I need a swig of coffee. There is a way to move hot water into your water heater or collector without a pump, but it's not going to work for most people, and I'll tell you why. Okay, take a look at this 
uh, photo here. What is happening in this photo? What is happening in this photo? It's a passive solar hot, well, it's not solar. It's a passive hot water system. This one happens just to be wood fired, okay? So convection is happening. Technically, the coil would be like the solar collector and the, the tank has to be above the solar collector for a passive solar hot water system to work. Now, people tend to want to put their solar collectors on the top of the roof. It makes a lot of sense. It doesn't take up space there. It gets a lot of sun. But if you do that, if you put your solar collectors on the roof, you cannot use the passive solar hot water system, which relies on the thermo siphoning effect, gravity and natural convection. As water heats up, it naturally rises. This rising effects allow the water to move in an upwards direction. Okay. We got that. That's convection. We like convection. So now we're going to talk about an active solar hot water system. Okay, let's see what I got here. Okay, we've got a pump. This is a transfer pump. You're going to need one if your hot water heater or your hot water collector uh, tank, that is, is located below your collecting situation. Simple. This is a $50 pump. It's on Amazon. Got a ton of great reviews. Links in the show notes. We'll keep it easy. Okay, you're also going to need a differential controller, and that's going to know when to turn the pump on and off. The differential controller uh, measures the temperature of the water, and it circulates, uh, it kicks a pump on for circulation. Okay, this is on uh, Amazon as well. I think it was something like 20 or 30 bucks. Link is in the show notes. Do not ask me how to set up a differential controller to kick on your, your transfer pump to circulate your solar hot water system because I don't freaking know because I do not do this kind of stuff. I do not like building systems that have parts that break down. I will make it happen where my collector and my hot water heater tank can use passive. It is the cheapest, easiest way that does not rely on moving parts and machinery and devices that you cannot fix if SHTF. All right, moving on. Oh, and Pepe approves. He understands. So now we're talking about how to size a solar hot water heater. You need to know how much water, how much hot water you're using per day. According to some source that I found, which is on the website. Uh, oh, I guess we didn't need that one yet. I don't know how to make that go away. Don't pay attention to that. Um, okay, you need to figure out how much water you're using per day per person. According to some source I found on the internet, that's totally legit because I only use legit sources. Uh, an, average per an average person in the USA uses about 15 gallons of hot water per day, and that is totally insane. That is an insane amount of hot water. I mean, you're taking like a freaking really long hot shower. You are using that freaking dishwasher. I mean, come on. This is where my off-grid pro tip kicks in. Learn how to reduce the amount of water you are using, the amount of hot water you're using. Okay, right now, my situation is I'm boiling hot water in a kettle. That is the only access to hot water I have. Yeah. I do live in Arizona, so outdoor showers, they're pretty cool. And I am going to be getting uh, a nice solar outdoor shower in the meantime while I'm working on building my luxury outhouse. That will be in an upcoming video. So these are tips on how to reduce the amount of hot water you use. Tip one is get a shower head with a pause button. Reduce the number of showers you take in a week. I mean, come on, do you really need to take one every day? That's crazy. <laughs> I know, obviously. Uh, turn off the hot water between soaping up dishes and rinsing dishes. Common sense, people. Turn off the hot water, or ho turn off water while brushing teeth, although you're not brushing your teeth with hot water unless that's really weird, but just save water. Uh, wipe things down with cloths or wet wipes. And this is a pausing shower head. You'll find a lot of these in campers. These are super cool. 
because you can pause your shower while you're soaping up. It saves a ton of hot water, okay? I lived in a camper for five freaking years. Three of those years was on a six gallon hot water tank. I pause my freaking shower all the time. So anyways, cool project, uh, cool product. Link is in the show notes, amazon.com. I get a little affiliate money if you order it from me. Moving on. Okay, so we're talking about sizing solar hot water heater. I told you this was gonna be a long one, guys. So this might be the point where you want to uh, save to your playlist and come back later. So we need to know how to size a batch solar water tank. All you gotta do is figure out how many gallons per person you're using per day. You have a four person household. I think I have a calculation right here. Four people using 10 gallons a day. You need a 40 gallon tank, done. You live somewhere cold, add 25% to that. Four people, 60 gallon tank. I don't recommend batch solar water tank in the winter, in the cold. We'll go over that later. Sizing your, oh my gosh, that's a lot of information all at once. Just go to the website and read all this. I'm not gonna read all this. Uh, sizing your uh, your tube, coil, and flat plate collector, okay? Sunny areas, one square foot of collector per two gallons of tank capacity. So for me in Arizona, 30 square feet of solar collector for a 60 gallon tank. Uh, when you go up to Montana, you can double and a half that to 80 square foot of solar collector with a 60 gallon tank. Pause it, read it, screenshot it, go to the website. Whatever floats your boat. Okay, this is what you all want to know. This is what you all want to know. At least you northern folks. Can you use a solar hot water heater in the winter? In cold climates and freezing climates and sub-zero temperatures? And the answer is Jack Nicholson says no. Hell no, guys. Okay, that is not entirely accurate. Yes, you can. You can, but it sucks because you have to use an antifreeze system. There is no way your batch tank collector is gonna make it through freezing temps. Uh, there is no way your coil collectors are gonna make it for you all in freaking Montana, North Dakota, especially not North Dakota, South Dakota, Canada, wherever the hell you are up there. Not happening. However, before you click away in frustration, I have created a video and an article on off-grid hot water heating methods, and there are plenty of methods for you that will work in freezing climates. Now let's talk about an anti-freeze solar hot water heater system. This is what it looks like, freaking crazy. So a closed loop antifreeze system will keep your solar hot water heater running throughout the winter. However, there are lots of parts involved and it's a complex system, clearly. So you're going to have to look into an HVAC professional to, uh, to install this, all right? And most heating contractors are knowledgeable about these systems because it's the same system that's used for radiant flooring. So yes, it is possible. Uh, but it's going to be a lot of money and you're not going to be able to work on it on your own unless you're really familiar with radiant heating systems. And if it breaks down and SHTF, you're totally screwed. So, uh, not my personal choice. I mean, technically you could use a solar hot water heating system in the winter during the summer. And then you just, uh, you would have to winterize your system. So it might be worth it for a few months. Whew, okay. The cost of a solar hot water heater. So this is like a prefab right here on top of this roof. Cool. It's gonna cost you about 2,500 bucks, just the equipment. The install is probably gonna cost you another 2,500 bucks. So you're probably looking at a $5,000 system. Now, if you notice, their collector tank is above their solar hot water heating panels. This means they're on a passive hot water system. Now, they probably have a controller installed because these prefab units usually have a controller. Okay, but it probably isn't really requiring a pump, so maybe there isn't a controller. I don't know. Maybe I'm just talking out of my ass. 
$5,000 for a system like this. Uh, you're going to save about, um, I have some figures here. The average cost of running a system like this is $100 a year. Uh, the average cost of running a standard electric hot water heater is about $600 a year. So you're getting $500 per year of savings on electric costs. You run this thing for 10 years, it pays for itself, unless if it breaks down, which it probably will. <laughs> the cost of running a DIY passive solar water heater system is zero. Okay. Big fan of the passive hot water heater system. So now we're going to talk about uh, solar hot water heaters for sale. Honestly, there's really not many on the market. These prefab systems are all sourced through your local either uh, solar installer or hot water heater installer, radiant heater installer. So you're going to have to call around and find one. However, I did find some for sale. I found this brand, which is a, uh, a Duda, D-U-D-A, active evacuated vacuum tube single coil hot water heater with holding tank. So you get the holding tank, you get the controller that looks like a pressure tank that comes with it, and you get the evacuated tubes, and this thing costs 3000 bucks on Amazon. Link in the show notes. All right. You can also get uh, this separate unit, just the evacuated thermal tubes, and I don't know how much those are. Product link is in the show notes. I do want to back up. Uh oh, I'm not backing up. One thing I got to tell you about this thing sitting on your roof is really freaking heavy. So you need to think about your load on your roof. So if you do want to install one of these bad boys yourself, how heavy is that freaking? How heavy is that collector tank? And how heavy are those two panels full of freaking water? It's a lot of weight. So this is why professional install is smart. You just don't want this thing crashing through your roof, okay? That's all I had to say about that. Moving forward to pros and cons of solar hot water systems. Okay, reasons why you want a solar hot water system. You will save on your energy bill. It's environmentally friendly. You can build a solar hot water heater for practically free, which I explain how to on the article on my website. You can install a hot water system anywhere. So let's say you need hot water in the middle of the boonies you get hot water wherever you want it to be, wherever you want to lug the equipment out to. You can build a system that doesn't rely on machinery. Like, that's how I like to do things. Okay, but there are cons of the solar hot water system. You need the sun to shine. Okay, think about this though, for reals. You need the sun to shine to have hot water. This is why you install it into a pre-existing hot water heater system because you may not have sun for a freaking week. You may have partial clouds. Oh, and guess what? At night, it gets cold and you lose all your hot water. Active systems have parts that can break down. Big fan of passive system. Prefabricated water systems are complex and expensive and you can't use most models in northern climates. Okay, those are your pros and cons. So, Let's see what's next. I don't even know what's next. Oh, we're at the end, and Pepe is cheersing you for making it, because I know that was a lot of information. Okay, people, remember to subscribe to my channel. I am working hard on releasing new, fresh content. It is not easy. Being a content creator is challenging. Like this video if you liked it. I think you did. I liked it and share it with your friends and family and those you think will find it usable and helpful. This is Regina with Maximum Off Grid signing out.